So I had a new song come out and I managed to pull off 11,000 Spotify streams in less than 11 days. And I did that with pretty much no playlist promotion. I did it almost exclusively with Facebook ads. Now I teach a lot about how to use Facebook ads to promote your music on this channel. And I did pretty much what I usually do with a few important tweaks. And in this video, I wanna show you exactly how I ran this campaign down to all the nitty gritty details that I've been tracking. Now, while a lot of people will tell you that playlists are the way to go with promoting your music on Spotify, I usually advise against that as your main method of promotion, unless you have no money to promote your music. Facebook ads give you a much higher quality of data, and that's what Spotify really cares about when it comes to promoting your music inside of Spotify. So one way that this song in particular popped, I'll put some graphics on screen, is that at first it went at a pretty good pace with just the ads alone. But as soon as it crossed that one week threshold, it got put into a whole bunch of release radars, which caused the song to, to pretty dramatically spike. Like it went from 924 streams per day up to 2,800 streams on the following Friday, and then it's still getting a good amount of traffic from release radar. And I wouldn't be surprised if it also gets on Discover Weekly after a couple more weeks. So the most important metrics that Spotify cares about, at least as far as I know, is the save rate of the song, the repeat listens of the song, and the follower or fan acquisition rate of, of your profile. So meaning that the save rate is when people click the heart, the repeat listen rate is if people listen more than once on playlists, that doesn't happen very much. And then also the follow rate, which means that if someone, like if a thousand people listen to your song, how many people actually end up following you? And playlists are horrible at this because people just click a playlist and listen most often passively if they're working out or if they're actually working their day job. And if someone clicks on an ad and goes to your profile, chances are they're gonna be somewhat more engaged. They're going directly to your song, so there's no option to just list, uh, listen kind of passively. They're listening actively, meaning they're going there and they're most likely to click like. They might add it to their own playlist and they, they might follow you as well. I'm gonna show you the exact Facebook campaign that I did in a sec, but first let me show you the metrics that I track manually. So you can see here I have the days going down here, then I have the ad spend, and I have streams, running streams, cost per stream, which is a calculated number, listeners, saves, the save rate, as you can see, it's, it's very high. The listener rate, playlists. So I know I mentioned that we wouldn't be pushing playlists, but this is kind of organic playlist. And then all just the data from the song, including followers and cost per follower that I, I manually just write this down every day. And then after the first week, every couple of days. So the first thing you'll notice is that the, the save rate is incredibly high, like 50% leading up to the day that it started getting pushed out to release radar. And if 50% if of the people that hear your song end up saving it, that, that means the song's damn good. Like some people have said that anything over 10% is good. So 50% is very high. The listen rate, people are listening two to three times, uh, over three times by the time that the song actually get pushed to release radar. And just organically kind of pushing it out to with ads, a ton of people add it to their playlist. Like it's on 253 playlists without playlist pitching. And sometimes these playlists actually get a good amount of streams. Um, even if it's just repeat listeners from the person who owns the playlist. And then you can see here in terms of, this is just like where the streams come from. At first it's mostly profile listens. And then the listeners that add it to their own playlist start to kick up streams as well. So that's what this column is here. Other playlist is mostly my playlist. So I have a, kind of a, my own playlist that I have with a good amount of traffic. And I put my own songs in there, of course. So that's what this other playlist mostly is. Now the algorithm side, you can see at first it gets pushed out to like my followers release radar. And some of those people check it out, which is fantastic. But then it gets pushed to re release radar of people who don't follow me. And that's because the song has such a high save rate, has such a high listen rate and the, the follower acquisition is pretty high. So then all of a sudden it spikes and I start getting, you know, about a third of all the traffic just for free from Spotify promoting it on other people's release radar that don't even know who I am. Then of course that leads me to the whole 11,000 streams. Oh, it's actually about 11,000 streams in 10 days, but yeah, it's killing it. Then of course the, the followers gain by that 10 day mark, I had gained 212 followers by running this campaign, which, which is pretty fantastic. Now it did cost about 85 cents per follower, um, but I'm not really trying to push followers. I'm trying to push people to the song and the followers happen as a side effect. There's also an unlisted category here of Instagram followers, which I think I gained like 100 Instagram followers as well, which is also fantastic. So now let's dive into the Facebook ad side of things. 
this is the campaign that I did. You can see there's two campaigns, one for Spotify, one for Apple Music. For the most part, we're disregarding the Apple Music one, but it is essentially identical. And the way I did it here is I split tested different audiences. Initially, I wrote this song to kind of sound like Lil Nas X, and then I did my own vocal style on it. So it ended up being kind of a rock song with electronic and hip hop vibes in it, I guess. So I tested um, Linkin Park, Post Malone, Fall Out Boy, Hollywood Undead, and then I also did a retargeting campaign because I ran, uh, if you saw my DistroKid video, I ran a, a Marcel um, clip for, for a couple of days to get people hyped in the song, or I think about a week actually. And you can see that I got a lot of data out of this. Like I, Facebook automatically optimizes, but I learned that Linkin Park fans and Post Malone fans, which is kind of crazy because those are kind of opposite spectrums, were the most likely to engage. And I was getting about nine cents to 10 cents per conversion, which is really good. So let me describe what a conversion is. So in particular, when people clicked on my link, they didn't go straight to Spotify because that gets a lot of uh, fake clicks, bot clicks, accidental clicks, and stuff like that. And I, so instead I took people to this page right here. This is a landing page where I put Spotify and Apple Music links. And then when someone clicks one of these buttons, it registers as a conversion. So for 10 cents, someone clicks on the ad, goes to this page, and then clicks one of those buttons, and then that triggers the conversion. And that's what the cost, the actions per 10 cents is. And this is just hyped it. Now, this is not a free service to embed a pixel on, but I'll show it to you because I get so many questions asking what I use and, and how it all works. So the way it works is that you just, you make an account on Hyped It. You have to have the pro account to, to get the pixel, but you go to share music and create a smart link. Now, when you do, it's gonna ask for the source of the track, the genre, the title, you can design how it looks, and then you can start including links. I, in particular, only put either just Spotify or Spotify and Apple Music. Um, and then the audio preview, I turn it off because sometimes people will just get to this page and listen there. And I don't want them to do that. I want them to go to Spotify. So I turn off the audio preview. And then here is where you embed your Facebook pixel. And this is what's gonna allow you to track the conversions. Then you just click update and now you're, everything is set on this page. So let me show you how this works on the ad side. So when you set up the campaign, you're gonna click the conversion type. And I started it off at $20 a day. And after the first week, I ramped it down to 15 and then to 10 and then now back up to 13 because I'm so happy with the results. So once you do that, you're going to be creating your ad set. And if you're confused by all of this, um, I do have plenty more videos in this, this playlist you can check out to kind of go through step by step some of the stuff. Uh, I'm kind of just showing you the highlights here. Um, but when, when you get to the ad set, which is this part here, this is where you define your audience, but it's also where you define your conversion event. And after you first trigger a hyped it smart link click, you, you can create a custom conversion based off of that inside of ads, uh, Facebook ads. And so that's the conversion event. And there's ways to test that out. Um, for example, I use this tool up here called Facebook Pixel Helper. And this just makes it so if I go on any page, I can make sure that my pixel events are firing. So if you're ever worried that a pixel is not firing, that's one way you can check it. Facebook also has a testing tool. So going down into this Linkin Park audience, um, I did a kind of a raw target where I just included every single Spotify country. If I go into browse, saved audiences, I have a Spotify territories all, which is just every single territory that Spotify exists on. So then I'm running it to what I consider my target demographic, which is all genders, mostly male, but all genders, 16 to 44. I target Spotify, and then I narrow the audience by Linkin Park. In the Post Malone one, I replaced that with Post Malone. In the Follow Boy one, I replace Lincoln Park with Follow Up Boy. And that's all that is. Now, just like a lot of my other ads that I run, I do them in the stories placement because I find that's where people already have their sound on and that's where they're most actively gonna hear what I'm pitching them and they're gonna be more likely to go and listen. I found it's a little more expensive when you're going on feed placements. You might find a different story depending on your type of music. Now, one thing interesting that I did that differs from my previous campaigns is inside of each ad set, I have four ads. I didn't know what was gonna to register the best with the audience. So I just made four ads. Two just have the album artwork and are two different parts of the song. And the other two are me like uh, singing slash rapping over the song. I just like dubbed recording, fake recording over the audio or the final song. And I thought that that might perform best. And if I go here, you can see it did indeed perform best by far. <laughs> Now, 
Now, the other thing I split tested here is that I have some of these on my personal Instagram account and Facebook account, the Andrew Southworth accounts. And then the other half are on my Genera Studios ones because I wanted to see if having your music on your own profile or on your like a fake label or promotion company profile would skew the results at all. And first glance, it shows that yes, if maybe there's something in the, the eyes of the viewer where if they see someone self-promoting, it looks a little lame, but if they see a company promoting them, it looks a little more legit. Now I need to test this more, but just to kind of show you what I did, that's what I did. Now just to show you the Apple Music one, it's the exact same thing, I, like everything set up identical. The only difference is instead of targeting Spotify and these artists, I target Apple Music and these artists. One interesting thing is that if I go to my dashboard here, we actually see that, you know, out of, uh, out of 4,000 people that went to this page, 2,000 something clicked, uh, and 91 went to Apple Music. But if I go back to Facebook ads, uh, you can see that 174 went there and triggered a conversion. So that means some of the Apple Music people just went to Spotify. So I'm guessing people have both, which is perfectly fine with me, but having the, the link be the same for the Spotify and Apple Music one was probably a good thing as a fallback, but then also a bad thing because I wasn't able to as adequately target Apple Music by itself. But I did also get a good amount of traffic. This is by far my best performing song on both Spotify and Apple Music. So anyways, I hope you found this video super helpful. If you did, I have this playlist waiting for you right here where I give you even more details about how to use Facebook ads to promote your music. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.